pleasure for me to be with you. And um, I'm assuming we're starting that now. Yeah. I'm going to ignore the specific slides, but they'll all be more or less relevant to what I'd like to share with you. Um, my interest is health and well-being, and I'm interested in how we got to where we are and what the future holds. And the website that I created has the strap line of what's next for the health of society, and that's a good way of summing up my interest. And um, this guy here did a wonderful BBC presentation where he looked at health in 1830 around the globe, and he plotted it to the present day. And basically, we got healthier, and in many senses, we got happier because of modernity, because of social, economic, and political development. And that is the, that's the wagon that pulled up, up, up health. In, in Glasgow's case, if you go back to 1830, people had been ripped off the land. Highland clearances, the famine in, in Ireland and elsewhere. And there was a time apparently where there was almost half a million people living within a mile or so of Glasgow Cross in the most appalling of conditions. And if you take indices like violence or uh, alcohol consumption or illegitimacy, they were extraordinarily worse than they are today. So if you ask the question, how did they make things better from 1830 onwards? What we do is we characterize these waves of improvement. And in each, in each wave, people understood the problem, predicted what would happen, and then controlled it. So the first thing was that the ship was in the water and cholera and other things were the result. So basically you had to bring about control. You had to remove the ship from the water, sewers, and the log caps and water supply. But that wasn't the only loss of control, need for control. So the first wave, there were no doctors particularly involved, there were no public health specialists. These were people, officials, top down, bottom up, working together, bringing about, understand, predict, control. It didn't work. It merely created the circumstances that allowed the next phase, which was about the growth of a whole kaleidoscope of developments, all of which created the modern city. I'm going to be a bit disrespectful in a second about modernity, but I have one statement to make in, in, in defense of modernity. It is anesthetic dentistry. Yeah? <laughs> it's to me the symbol of a gazillion good things that happened in the late 19th century and the early 20th century. And on the back of that, health improved, well-being improved, life expectancy improved, but it was unequal in its distribution. So after the Second World War, people came back determined to try and make it more equal, and on the back of that, the welfare <coughs> state came. And the point is that it, we, I call them waves because they bring great progress. When the welfare <laughs> state first came along, it brought great progress. But the truth of the matter is that it's in many senses run out of steam. And Spending more money, there's bits of Glasgow that have been rebuilt three or four times in the last 30 years. And what we face now is a set of inexorable problems of which the um, uh, Da Vinci man illustrates. We have problems now like obesity, loss of well-being, addictive behavior, and inequality between the communities. And these things no longer respond to our understand, predict, control approach. There is no drug, there is no law capture water supply, there is no single intervention that responds in that way that's going to do the trick. And the basic problem that we face is that these problems, obesity, loss of well-being, are the product of the very city, the very society that we've created. Um, I could defend that, but um, time does not permit. So things are going to change. The consumerism of which this speak won't last. The debt crisis, the energy crisis, and the ecological crisis will bring about change. Now, I, I can't tell the future, and I don't know how or where. But when people say it's not sustainable, it doesn't mean we'll make it work if we build enough windmills. It means it will not be sustained. It means our society will change just as it changed from the world of the Highland Clearances to the modern city. It will change from the world of the modern city to something we do not yet know. And do we show any signs that we will change our cities to improve well-being and reverse the best of epidemic? No, we do not. We build bigger theatre seats. We adapt <laughs> in all sorts of ways. And so my basic message is that the challenge for Glasgow, if we are to genuinely respond to the health problems that we face, our problems are worse, not just in more affluent areas, but if you compare us with Liverpool and Manchester, which have almost exactly the same post-industrial and deprived profile, Glasgow has got incredibly worse mortality, in particular in areas like drugs, 
alcohol and suicide. And we need to ask ourselves why. So what I'm saying is this, that what we should be looking to is a change of age. Perhaps because of the energy issue. I don't know if that will be the driver. It might be because of global warming. It might be because of the debt crisis. Or it might be of something unyet seen or imagined. But my fundamental argument is that the world changes. That human beings are good at adapting eventually. We've done this before and we can do it again. That is our prospect. And that's what's exciting about what you've organized. Because it's going to take something across the whole city. The next wave of improvement in health and well-being is not going to be the product of doctors and medicines. They'll play their part. Clean water will continue to play its part. The welfare state will continue to play its part. All these things are important. I'm not negating them. But what we need to do is imagine a Glasgow that is as different from today as that little uh, settlement was from the industrial city that emerged in the industrial revolution. It is that profound the change that we're making. This book speaks of these themes, but I would be interested in seeing what others have to say with respect to the possibility of such a change of age. Thank you very much. Indeed.